Hello, I'm Ian Dale and welcome to the latest Leveling Up Goals seminar in association with Amazon. Uh, we're going to be talking about the third Leveling Up Goal, Positive Destinations Post 16 Plus over the next hour. I'll introduce the panel in a moment, but first a word about Amazon. Now, Amazon has committed to play a key role in Leveling Up in the UK by taking a, a leading role on shaping the Leveling Up Goals. The result will be a set of metrics and indicators which can be used by any organisation to to focus their social impact efforts towards regions and communities where greater social mobility is most needed. Now, Amazon are leading on the development of Leveling Up Goal 3, as I said, positive destinations post 16 plus, which looks to ensure every young person and adult are to have the choice of a high quality route in education, employment or training. Now, if you've listened or watched uh, if you listen to or watch the previous seminars, you know this is a subject that we, it really comes into virtually every webinar that we've done. Now, let me introduce the panel that we've got for you today to discuss this. Uh, Beth Knight is the Europe leader of Amazon, the community. Beth joined Amazon in 2020 to lead the development of community programs, products and services across Europe. Nicola Drury is the UK apprenticeship manager. She first joined Amazon in 2013 and she led the UK training teams who were responsible for training thousands of associates each year on the processes which result in products being delivered to Amazon's customers. Uh, Justin Greening will be no stranger to you. She's chair of the uh, Purpose Coalition and levelling up goals and of course former Secretary of State for Education, Transport and International Development. And we're delighted also to have Seema Kennedy joining us again, co-chair of the Purpose Coalition, levelling up goals and of course former Government Minister and Conservative MP as well. Um, Justin, let's start off. I don't know if you want to introduce this particular levelling up goal and maybe sort of ally it to, to where Amazon are coming from in, in what they do. Thanks, Ian. Thanks for, for chairing this webinar. So levelling up goal three really is about what happens as people get towards leaving the education system, but also perhaps they're into their careers and they're wanting to re-engage with education and, and perhaps get a career back on track that for various reasons have been off track. It very much sits alongside levelling up goal four, which is about right advice and right experiences. All of this matters because particularly for young people coming out of education, they need to then make sure that the talent they've developed is put to good use and that they're able to then genuinely fulfil their potential. That means different pathways being available for some very different people, young people in our country. For some, they'll want to perhaps go on and continue their education, um, perhaps going down an academic route. For others, they may want to go into more vocational-based education. And of course, we'll hear from um, Beth and Nicola, particularly Nicola at Amazon, around what that apprentice apprenticeship route means for people coming into their company. Um, and for others, it means re-engaging in training and, and actually the chance to continue developing even when you're in the workplace and perhaps you began your working life a number of years ago. Businesses can have a crucial impact on all of this, both upstream in terms of the work that they're doing on employability, um, and I hope we can hear about some of the work that Amazon does, particularly with people perhaps who've been in care, who maybe are unlikely to get employability, employment unless they get um, support to do that. But also then for many people who perhaps aren't academic and frankly want to just get on with their careers, um, it's a good chance today, I think, in this webinar to really hear from Amazon about the work that they do on apprenticeships. The final point I really want to make is that often, for, particularly for young people, um, but also people re-engaging with their, their careers and development, that moment is a moment of risk. And, and sometimes when you're deciding you're going to have a different direction or you're going to set off on a journey on your career, there are times when that goes well, but also times when it doesn't. It's one of those moments that needs to be managed. And businesses have a key role in helping to almost de-risk those choices that people are making by being able to give that support they often need to just get those early steps done well. And if we can manage people over those moments when they are transitioning from what they've been doing to this new career path they want to be on, um, then you really do get the most out of them 
And that's the other key point for me about this goal that really, really matters. And, and that's what I really want to get into through the work that Amazon are doing. Well, Nicola and Beth, let, let's have a, a few opening words from you both before we get into the, 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 the substance of, of this. What, Beth, let's start with you. What, why did you want to get involved with the levelling up goals? And what, why, why is this third levelling up goal so important to you and for Amazon? So in, in my day job, I head up community investment across Europe for Amazon and a big part of the corporate philanthropy work that we do is really focused on young people, particularly young people from underrepresented or, or underserved backgrounds. And so when you think about destinations post 16, um, that the landscape in the jobs market that we have, but also the things that people have been dealing with, particularly over the last year, um, that generation of young people coming into the workforce um, have a lot to navigate and so when we think about the role that corporates have in supporting them in helping them give that roadmap in the new jobs landscape that we see evolving particularly in the UK um, that I think as an employer we have a, a real duty of care there um, and I, I'm really excited about the ability that we have to apply what, what we could talk about with goals with success measures but also really tangibly um, bringing stories forward bringing examples forward helping people understand the journeys um, that are open to them and whatever that career path may might what pathway apologies might be um, I think that that's why I'm here and that's why I'm interested in the work we're doing together. Nicola. Yeah hi Ian I think very much the same obviously as Beth. And I think why it's so important to me, I can certainly relate, you know, to this as uh, Justin was saying, you know, I was not academic, I'm still not academic. Um, you know, I, I was at school, you know, went to college, never knew what I wanted to do. Um, and I didn't go to university, you know, I, I don't have a degree. I was always interested in, you know, working and, and learning that way. And that's how I've developed my career from taking opportunities and chances. Um, but I don't think there are clear, it doesn't feel like there are clear paths for young people to take. Um, and that's why I'm really passionate about it. And I think it's great that we're introducing things like T-levels now, because that really then supports a different audience. I'm sure we'll get into some of these avenues later on as well. But it is, like as Beth said, it's about, you know, employers offering different opportunities and making sure they're diverse opportunities, because we have such a diverse, you know, population who are looking you know, to level up, to to gain that, you know, step in the door. And I think that's what Amundsen does really well. And hopefully we'll get into that later. But I know I've, you know, definitely got a personal uh, passion for this as well. And Seema Kennedy, when we look at this levelling up goal on, on positive destination 16 plus, uh, big companies, big corporations are actually very important to this as well as, well as small and medium sized enterprises, aren't they? But do you think that there is a barrier with some people where they, they see a big company is somehow anonymous that and they may use its services? And I guess, I mean, anybody over 16, I guess, is using Amazon at some point. Um, but the, the big companies can tend to be a little bit intimidating for some people, can't they? And do you think that that's something that people, people need to get over in, in this kind of area? I'd say my experience of my visit to Amazon was really quite the opposite. Um, a, there was lots of people who'd been referred by friends that, um, that wanted to come. And there was like real palpable enthusiasm and friendliness in the organization. It was not at all, people really knew each other. And um, I think actually big companies, because they do have a reach and a brand, they can overcome those barriers and sort of looking like intimidate. I think they're almost more approachable than some small and medium sized companies where let's say the senior leadership is a bit older. I'm thinking of, you know, like my family business, you know, we're, we're a bit old, we might not necessarily be able to understand. I think from what I experienced of Amazon, they really were good at working into the community and understanding the people there. And their people were the best advocates for recruitment. Um, Beth, do you think, and I suspect this is something that afflicts a lot of big companies, not, not just Amazon, but I think if you say to somebody, what do you think an average Amazon employee does? And they would probably say, well, that they pick things off the shelves and they put them on a conveyor belt and they pack them. 
but it's so much wider than that, isn't it? There are so many different ways that that Amazon and uh, and other companies can can offer opportunities to younger people, and it's just I, I imagine enabling them to find out what those opportunities are. Yes, very much so. I think with a lot of large companies, the the average person would associate one or two things with a key brand um, and there's a lot to be done around demystifying the jobs landscape right because they're non-traditional career paths it's not like explaining I'm a teacher I'm a fireman um, I work at Amazon could mean many things you know we employ over 40,000 people in the UK um, in terms of the jobs we open up it's close to a, a quarter of a million when you start to factor in our, our drivers and our logistics networks etc so helping um, young people to understand um, what that means um, and how they can identify with people in those roles as well. I think Nicola made such a good point around career paths. Um, you don't have to be a graduate to work your way into these types of positions. There's a lot of mobility also within these companies and between the different workforces, be it starting in a fulfillment center as an associate or moving through into one of the corporate offices and positions. And so um, helping um, people coming into that job market with, with the kind of understanding of employment opportunities is, is so critical. Um, and I think that the work that Nicola does on the apprenticeship um, programs and the support that she gives to people to really help and empower them to not only unlock those paths but also the support that you give to people when they come into the companies to help direct their own careers is just as critical and i oh. think yeah sorry Ian. Yeah, go on go on Nicola. No, no i'm just about to say you know i, I just remembered you know a story um a few years ago i went to a career fair an apprentice career fair and obviously there's lot lots of um lots of children everywhere and um you know and this this young girl came up to me and she says, what do you do? What does Amazon do? Because as you've said, people just don't know. It's a massive company, but people don't really know what it's about. And that for me is a really critical thing that we really need to get out there. And I said to work, I thought that's a real big question, right? <laughs> what, what, what jobs do we have? I thought, oh, a bit too big. So I turned it around. I said, you know, well, what do you want to do? You know, and she's like, I really want to do hairdressing. And I said, well, actually, you know, Amazon doesn't do hairdressing, but you never know. And obviously now we've, you know, now we've got shops. Um, but I think it is about, you know, as Beth said, a lot of people will associate Amazon with those big warehouses. You know, you go down the motorway, big sheds, if you like, and people, you know, picking and packing. Now, I started my career off in a distribution centre in Doncaster, uh, which I loved. Um, so I um, was a learning development manager, but I used to go down, you know, obviously, you know, work on the process as well to understand it. And uh, I loved, loved packing. Um, but what is so fantastic... I love unpacking. Yeah, I, I, yeah, well, I love packing. I love packing. Yeah, just fits in now. I love packing. Uh, and... Um, and then what, what you see, and I've been in it and I've seen it, and as like Beth said, for the apprenticeships and, you know, non-apprenticeship routes, people come in, and a lot of people come in as a stopgap. Um, you know, it's not what I want to do. It's not what I want to be for long. Um, you know, people say that. And now we've got people like, you know, I'll give you an example of David, who works in the Midlands. So David is 50, got made redundant from banking and, you know, he did 15 years, got made redundant a couple of years ago came to his local Amazon, just a bit of a stopgap, so he wondered what he wanted to do, thought, you know what, I really like it here. Um, he became a team leader really quickly. He's now an area manager, and now he's doing his degree apprenticeship to get a degree, because he's never had the opportunity to do that. Now, he's leading hundreds of people, so he's kind of like really progressing himself through that route, and then using an apprenticeship as well to further himself. And then we also, like say, have lots of young people, but I think, like I said, the key thing is it's really about removing those barriers and helping people see that there is more. There is more to everything you do. If you want it, it is there and it is all laid out for you. You've just got to grab it and take it. And that is what I think a lot of people just don't see or are not aware of. So I think that is, that's one of the key things for employers to I think we just really need to drive it. We know there's lots of vacancies out there. There's lots of jobs out there, but it's how we match up that skill set. So how do we take young people, provide the skills for them to fulfill those roles? And I think that, that is a challenge. 
uh, and some, someone said to me once that, that they, they, they'd actually worked in uh, for Amazon for a time and they said the culture is very different to how you might imagine it to be. And they said it's, it's built around solving impossible problems. And if, if you're that sort of person that can do that, you can really move on very, very quickly. I mean, in, in terms of that kind of thing, how, how does, what does, what does that mean to both of you? And do you recognise that description best? Definitely. I mean, my, my my job is about solving impossible problems, and I you know I have a mandate to do that, which which is just wonderful. It's extremely it's extremely liberating. Um, what I love about Amazon's focus and the words that I always come back to is is heart and grit, and I think it's got that lovely combination in its culture of wanting to do the right thing, but also not being afraid to make the difficult decisions, and and having that kind of customer obsession that's also blended with you know wanting to do the right thing by being the world's best employer by focusing down on supporting both our community our future customers and also those people that enter into our workforce that's a lot that one organization is trying to do um, but at the same time having the mandate and trust in the staff to make that happen is phenomenal and that's at, that's across all levels and I and I think it's brilliant when you look at how Amazon recruits and how it brings people into the organization um that it really does look for people that have that that's something special about them and how do you recruit because I mean all sorts of different companies have different ways of doing it I, I'm not I can't have can I remember seeing a big Amazon advert in in the papers for jobs how, how do you get to people the kind of people that you really want to recruit Beth. yeah I don't mind I don't want to monopolize the conversation yeah, either so. Nicola, Nicola that's fine you, you take that yeah. one I mean, I, I mean, I don't obviously look after recruitment in Amazon. I can talk about apprenticeships. Um, but I think as Beth just said, you know, obviously our systems are people upload a CV, you know, but a CV isn't everything, right? Um, and with apprenticeships, a CV is not really worth a lot for us because we're not looking at what you have done. We're looking at what you can do and you can't necessarily write that on a piece of paper. So people upload their CVs um, and then we do like like video interviews um, where people upload like videos of themselves, um, you know, answering questions. It's all based on motivation and potential. That's how we do the apprenticeship recruiting. And, it, and it's great. And then we do like an assessment centre, which hopefully supports people's different strengths. So we do like a group exercise, individual presentations, and then one-to-one -one interviews, again, about motivation, what do you want to do? Why do you want to do it? Because obviously it's a very different way of recruiting somebody. Um, you know, scanning a CV is not gonna work for an apprenticeship. Um, but for our other path into Amazon, um, they, uh, we do like panels. So again, with our leadership principles, which you know you may be aware of, you know, that you can see them on our website. And that really enforces our culture, as Beth said. Um, and even though as a business, we have grown and grown and grown and grown, you know, hugely, that culture is very evident and you'll very much feel it and see it, um, you know, within the within Amazon. And uh, very much so, and as Beth said, it is, it's really exciting, very liberating. Um, we always start with the customer and work backwards. It's about doing the right thing. Um, and you know what? And if you get it wrong, you get it wrong. You learn by it. And you, and you move on. Uh, learning's good, right? You know, learning's great because that's what makes you even better. So yeah, it's um, it's a it's a great culture, a great culture to be part of. Justine, do do you think that there what, what are the barriers for younger people, maybe sort of sixteen to twenty, to get into bigger companies? Do you think there are barriers, or do you think, as Seema says, that they tend to be more welcoming? Well, I think it depends, doesn't it, what kind of company it is. Sometimes there's a barrier, you know, as you suggested to Seema, that people just think, well, there's no point in me applying there because I'm not going to get a job at a big company, which maybe in their mind they think is a blue chip company. Um, maybe they haven't had a chance to do work experience. Sometimes if it's a big, successful company, they may do recruitment that in its own way is quite close. They may just fish in a quite narrow pool of a few universities. They may not bother doing apprenticeships because they think they don't need to. But actually, what was really interesting to me about the, the visit that we had to Amazon was just the wealth and the variety of people working there. I mean, really different people in the same team. I also caught the enthusiasm, I think, on any of these sorts of 
visits. You know, I did a lot as a Secretary of State and, and went to all sorts of places. You know, it's interesting when you pick up on something so quickly in a place. Um, and certainly the trip to Amazon, you know, you couldn't manufacture that enthusiasm. We met lots of different people. It wasn't just the people that, that we ended up having discussions with about their career paths. It's just a general vibe around the place um, that was very real and, and high energy and gave you a sense, actually, of a business where you really could go places and there was a level of flexibility in your career path um, that meant there were so many different routes open to you. And I think like many tech companies in a way, one of the challenges is if you have lots of shops around the place, actually you can kind of get a sense of what that sort of business is. But if it's a website, it is probably a lot harder to get a sense of the culture by definition. And so Part of what we're doing with the levelling up goals is trying to play somewhat of a role in demystifying, you know, what, what these very different businesses are like Amazon. But it is a huge com company and it has created thousands of new opportunities for people. And, and I think the work that is being done to enable some really disadvantaged people to connect up with those opportunities is absolutely transformation, transformation because it's not just about the quantity that they're doing, it's also the quality and, and the work that's being done by Beth and her team alongside Nicola to really make sure that they have the maximum levelling up impact for the wider communities that Amazon's part of. Um, you mentioned there that Amazon created a, a lot of opportunities. Well, earlier this year, they announced the creation of a thousand UK apprenticeships, I think across 25 different fields from logistics to robotics. Now, I think that's really interesting because wh when, when you say the word apprenticeship, I think people sort of pigeonhole it in a way and don't look at the really varied varied fields that there are available for people to uh, get get positions in. Now, Nicola, can you tell us more about how this is going to impact not only local communities across the UK, but also Amazon's own people and to how, how you can retain people and how they gain new skills at a time when investing in people and positive destinations has never been more important? Yeah, absolutely. And, um, and I think, like I say, with apprenticeships, people sometimes, you know, think apprenticeships are only for young young people who are not academic you know <laughs> I wish I'd done an apprenticeship I wish my you know school and college had talked to me about apprenticeships been perfect still time, still and, well time. you know what there is because I tell you something Ian, we have apprentices in Amazon aged 18 to 60 so that just goes to show the variety and diversity of people we attract people who are in our business and also what we've got to offer um and I think for me, you know, around the communities, we offer apprenticeships across the UK. Um, as our footprint expands, we are also expanding where our apprenticeship roles are available. So I think nearly, nearly every, well, every distribution centre um, and delivery stations, which we're going into now, we will have opportunities for all, regardless of background. So we have the level two entry level apprenticeship scheme where we don't ask for any GCSEs. Um, not O-levels, if we're going back a little bit further. Um, okay, okay. Actually, yeah, so, <laughs> so that really, and what is great about that scheme is that, you know, you, you come in, it's on operations, you do your level two. So if you don't have that secondary school education level or you've been out of education for a while, you can do that. It eases you back in. Because as we mentioned before, you're working full time and you're studying again and that you know, you have to be quite resilient to do that. That could, that could be quite tough. Now, the people who have completed that level two apprenticeship scheme, which we offer, nearly 50% of those have gone on to a higher level apprenticeship within Amazon. So they've used that as a really nice step and they've gone on to like a level three. Um, so we offer from level two to level seven the apprenticeships. Our founders who said, Ian, um, opportunities this year around about 50 50 50 about new brand new roles people to come into and then about 50 percent of them were offered to internal existing employees as well so they've got an opportunity to upskill and reskill so we've got opportunities across the uk like it engineering automation team leading hr safety and within the corporate side you know we've got some really exciting roles um, this year we launched a, 
a broadcasting assistant apprenticeship I, in Amazon Studios Prime Video. <laughs> I'm like, I am so applying for this. And it's <laughs> just fantastic. I quite like to. Honestly, I was like, you know, you know, when you're creating roles for people, you just like get well, I'm very jealous. Um, and and you know, like we were saying before, we get people who we offer those roles to. And they're like, I can't believe I've got this role. I can't believe I'm working in Amazon. I'm like, why? You know, you, you kind of smashed it. You did it. You're here. So we do find people taking the apprenticeships, using them as a step. We've also got people, um, like we've got um, Aritha. She worked in our logistics last year, started last year. And now she's a data analyst apprenticeship in Amazon Fresh. So within less than a year, she joined Amazon, took an opportunity to do the apprenticeship. And now she's data analyst on, on a degree apprenticeship. Uh, working in fresh and then we've got our career choice program so again we talk about different routes career choice if you're in amazon and, and you want to look at a slightly different career which might not off offer in amazon then you can again do that we will pay up to 95 percent of your tuition fees and then you can leave amazon because that's okay too it's you know it's okay to qualify users <laughs> you know and, and then go you know and then do something different it's okay to do that and we will support you well that's interesting because i think again people hear the word apprenticeship and they think well yeah but they're, wanted, they're going to want me to commit for the rest of my life because if they're investing in my training why would they then allow me to go elsewhere but you're saying that you almost positively encourage people to do that oh, i wouldn't say that in <laughs> <laughs> we don't we certainly don't tie people in i think you know for rules when you do an apprenticeship that might be 15 months could be to four years anything can happen in that time in your personal life also what jobs are going to be available so yes obviously yes we invest time we invest money and yes we would like to you know convert you but you don't have to. For me, the measure is you've completed your apprenticeship, you've got two, three, four years experience in a company, and you've got your qualification. Go, you know, and go and do a, whatever you want to do. In a way, it's just mm -hmm. recognising modern society and modern employment in that very few people leave school at 16 and stay with the same company for the next 40 years or 40 or 50 years. I mean, my oh, best friend at school joined Barclays Bank at the age of 18 and he's just retired at the age of 59 from the, from Barclays Bank. That just hardly happens now, does it? Yeah, yeah. when you talk to young people, um, you know, it's interesting. When I, when I was talking to some of our existing associates a couple of years ago uh, about some of our longer apprenticeships, with their degree apprenticeships, so they are a bit longer, three to four years. And I was like, you know, what do you fancy doing that? They're like, oh, what a, oh that's, a long that's a long time. <laughs> so, yeah, everything, anything over two years was, oh, it's a very long time. And, and you're absolutely right, Eve. People want to move around. That is society. You know, that, that is how it is. So therefore, we need to adapt to that. Uh, and Seema, do you think that industry in general, or indeed small and medium-sized enterprises, have adapted to the modern way of wanting to work I think, in, that, uh, in that sense? Well, you've, this is a really a very important aspect of this goal, that it's 16 plus. So we, of course, it's a really important, I, I have somebody who's in that, you know, he's just done his GCSEs, my son's doing A-levels, but who knows? But it's really important to recognize, yes, that transition, that tradition, traditional transition, which for one group of people was into the workplace um, or into a, but, and another staring on at school. But um, and that is really important. And that is a group that we need to work with. And we were lucky, Justine and I were lucky enough to meet that younger cohort when we went on our visit to Amazon. But it's about lifelong learning. I noticed I didn't get an invite. Well, well, if you're nice to Beth um, and Nicola, I'm sure you will. And, you know, <laughs> this is a serious point, Ian. You've had lots of, you know, you've had a career as a politician. Now you're a respected journalist. Perhaps in your next life, you could be working on Amazon Prime or Amazon Fresh. I mean, and I'm not joking because I'm on to my third career or something like that. Um, and I'm a little bit younger than you. So who knows what I could be doing in five, 10 years time. But I mean, I'm joking aside, it's I think really to be fair, you're more than 10 years younger than me, but hey. <laughs> it must be the filter that Ian's put on me. But what <laughs> I would say is, on a serious note, if we want and we really do and we're really passionate about levelling up the country, we've got to be flexible and all of us have got to be nimble. And Amazon is part of this and lifelong, lifelong learning. So as we've, we've just been hearing, people are 
working and learning. And I think in all our jobs, we've got to be open to that. Because as you said, as your friend, who, yes, he's had a 40 year career at Barclays, but I bet he hasn't been doing the same job all the time. He's probably no. been moving around the organization. And, and this is the great strength of, of a big organization like Amazon with lots of different um, different aspects to it. You could work in Amazon your whole life, but actually have done thousands of different roles in it. But that is, that's a really key thing, thinking um, what it's that plus. And for me, that's very exciting. The fact that you have got people who perhaps had a tricky start in life. And when they were 16, they were finding it difficult. That doesn't mean that you stop. You know, there's great things that you can do in your 20s, 30s, 40s, 50s and beyond. Um, Beth, tell us a little about Amazon's uh, future engineering program, because I think that that's something that I think people might want to hear about as a good example of the kind of thing that a company like yours can do. Amazon's Future Engineer program is really focused on computer science skills development uh, with a view to kind of building equity and access to careers in computer science. So if you think about the growth in technology career paths and the growth in also kind of salaries in that space, we want to ensure that there's a level playing field um, and that people can can knock down the, some of those systemic barriers that they might find to entering those types of career paths. So if you think about that from a kind of life cycle perspective, um, there's stuff there at a primary and secondary school age around supporting children on our Maths for All programme with access to maths that is then a feeder into computer science education. A number of people that might have an aptitude for careers in that space, but don't have the financial security to access university, we provide bursaries for. And very similarly, similarly to the apprenticeships, um, they're, they're unrestricted, right? So there's not a kind of commitment to come and work at Amazon post those bursaries. But in offering them and through the partnership that we have with the Royal Academy of Engineering, we're really focused on um, underrepresented and underserved groups. So what I mean by that really is, is women, um, black and ethnic minority groups that typically find that they don't have um, role models already working in the industry or there's fewer of them or they don't have the financial means to access further education. Um, we also have the apprenticeships, um, so hence why Nicola and I work very closely together. Um, I even have an apprentice on my team who helps to oversee and program manage the Amazon Future Engineer program. So um, we're also keen to make sure that as we're really considering what levelling up means, that it's not us from a point of privilege deciding and defining what that should be. So really listening to the, the kind of customers of those programs so the people that we're trying to help support level up what do they need what's the support that they need it's all very well you know having a pathway but not understanding that they're there not seeing people like you already walking down that pathway um, perhaps having limiting beliefs on whether it's for you um, quite often we get lots of questions around can I do this I'm not sure is this for me and so all the partnerships that we have with organisations like Teach First, like Bernardo's, to try and help young people, um, particularly young people that, that don't have the opportunities or haven't seen somebody in their immediate family or personal circle move into these types of careers, um, get more exposure to things, um, realise and understand the potential that they have. Um, you asked me earlier about how we recruit and what's different. Um, I think understanding and assessing potential in people from a wealth of examples, you know, we're all the sum of our parts. And in an interview, if you can talk about things you've done at school, things you've done in your personal life, adversity that you've overcome, um, showing that heart and grit and how you bring that into your into your work life, into your day job, um, which is how we spend a lot of our time, right? We spend a lot of our time at work. You want to be surrounded by people that can emulate that and can can overcome that, but with an environment around them that supports them and enables them to do that. And I think that that's the important distinction. I think one other thing here is the, the relationship between companies, whether they're big or small, and their local um, communities, and that there's a real opportunity, particularly in certain areas, for a particularly big company maybe to help level up um, a, a local community. Justine, how important is that? Do you think? 
I think more and more employers are realizing that they are anchor institutions, that they have a scale, if you like, that's big enough, that means they genuinely can behave in a way that has this wider impact. A lot of the people who are at the in you know the the fulfillment centers and in Amazon are from that community. So actually it's genuinely a chance not just for if you like the people leading the business, but for the employees who are part of it and make it what it is to have a big impact. And whether that's through the volunteering work that was done. Um, I mean obviously for most of us we're just coming out of the COVID pandemic. These were people that kept the show on the road for a lot of our lives. I know they did for mine in terms of that entire logistics operation that enabled people to get crucial things that they weren't really able to leave home to get like they normally would have done. So I think the other interesting thing for me, though, about what Amazon was doing was that all of that work gets you so far in a community a long way. But actually, they were looking beyond that to people who were really a long way away from getting opportunity with that additional support. And, and we heard from people who had, through Bernardo's, genuinely being able to get career paths into the business um, that were transformative for their lives. And, you know, that is really tough leveling up to do for a business. But if you're able to do that toughest leveling up, then you're creating huge impact actually in, in the communities that you're part of. Um, Beth, let's come back to you on this because I know this is something that you feel passionately about. How do you, you've got these 25 different centres all over the country. I imagine that they're, they're all unique in their own individual ways, their communities are unique. Uh, and it's clearly to your advantage to enmesh yourselves in those communities rather than appear as this sort of rather big, this big shed up the road where lots of people uh, work. Sorry for the description. But you know what I mean? Um, how do you enmesh yourself in local communities and, and what kind of things do you do? It's, it's a big question. So, I, I mean, the, the, the macro answer to that is really, if you think about what we've done over the last year, so since the outbreak of the pandemic over the last year, Amazon's invested over 100 million in our community investment work. So the, the way that we approach um, through a philanthropy lens, things like donating to local charities, local organisations, national campaigns to support social mobility, address digital poverty, and, and what it actually means at a very real level. So how we address that fundamentally we've got think we've got programs around food security for example so we have this partnership with magic breakfast where we're really keen on ensuring that we've got breakfast deliveries they were into homes during lockdowns and then into schools in a, in a normal world um, to make sure that children have food in their bellies so that they can learn so that they're they're at their best aptitude in a school environment through to addressing things like digital poverty. So Amazon does a lot of tech donations. We did 10,000 device donations with, with Teach First in the second wave of the pandemic to help uh, vulnerable children who are perhaps homeschooling get access to all the e-learning content that's out there, some of which we put up um, on, our, on our websites. Um, and then through through to actually roots into, into jobs and employment. So when Justine and Seema came to visit our Tilbury FC, they met um, some of the care leavers that had gone through our, uh, our programme with Bernardo's, which is, which is quite a good example we're very proud of. Um, but those children, um, I shouldn't say children really, they're young adults. Um, so those young adults um, receive mentoring support from Bernardo's who are much more experienced in understanding the, the kind of backgrounds and the support needs that, that those young people would benefit from through to the kind of technical skills development, the exposure to the really strong people managers that we've got in all of our FCs, and then giving them that kind of segue into, um, into jobs. So those people that went through that employability program um, had the opportunity to join our associate pool, had the opportunity to become apprentices, hopefully will move through and stay with Amazon post the kind of support and the Bernardo's program that they've been on. Um, they may choose not to, but even before you get into our kind of direct recruitment pipeline, our community investment work is intended to help you not just reach your potential, but also understand your potential to really knock down those limiting beliefs and help you um, have the confidence that you, that you need to, to kind of find your own feet and enter that job market. 
And Nicola, presumably all of these things um, make it, make your job easier. If you're recruiting new apprentices and you can sort of sell the company partly on the basis of what the, the things that Beth's been talking about, that must be a tremendous advantage. Yeah, absolutely. And, and like Beth said, we know we do do it. There's a lot going on um, and there's a lot of people probably don't realise. Uh, and like I say, with apprenticeship recruitment, you know, for, for me, it's, it's easier. <laughs> yeah, because obviously when we're not looking for qualifications and experience and we can really do a great reach you know out there um and really you know bring these opportunities to life for young people you know which we do um we've also got things like aws restart um again which is a program which is offered which is free uh, and that's to give people like i think it's 10 week at boot camp on cloud skills as well and then we support them in finding employment um as well you know to, to use those and we're, you know, we're currently doing our amazon transfer funds as well where we're helping smes and you know fund their um, apprenticeship so you know, we're trying to really do that reach and, and do what we can to support um but yeah i think there's, there's lots of fantastic things we do uh, from the employability side you know once um people are in work then they've got all these options apprenticeships career choice you know or just general development through the business in terms of, I'm just returning to the subject of the levelling up goal. How, how conscious are you of the different, um, you've got 25 different uh, sites throughout the country. Some of those sites will be in areas that Justine and Seema would define as areas that need levelling up. Um, how conscious are you of those? And, what, and do, you, do you consciously do things differently maybe in some of those areas? we do do consciously do things differently because people from different communities need different things um you know so if you've got for example an area where you've got um a group of people that their first language isn't english um and so they might think i i can't apply for this opportunity it's not for me i can't see people working in these types of environments that look like me that sound like me um it's not true, right? So helping them to understand um, that work, the workforce is diverse and, and it should be quite rightly diverse and that they can find and navigate their space within any work environment. Um, I think part of that is also the work that we do through our affinity groups. So um, Amazon has a, a black employee network, a women's network, an ethnic, you know, a disability network, um, any network you can think of, we probably have. And so um, we do things like... And, and, and um, just, just on that, though, is that a sort of top down thing where you, you actively create these networks or is it, is it, does it all come from, from the employees themselves? It's both. It's both. And I think I think quite rightly it should be. Um, and so if, if you're looking to join the company and you want to speak to somebody within these networks, you have the ability to ask for that as part of your kind of recruitment journey. Quite often you'll find our employees out doing volunteer programs in local schools, supporting with um, environmental cleanups, any number of things. Um, so just being physically present and in the community and understanding what's important locally. Um, that, that's highly relevant, you know, who wants to kind of have this, this big company on their doorstep that's not invested in doing the right thing for them and their community, no one, and, and I think that's quite, quite a valid opinion and therefore Amazon chooses to embrace the needs of uh, people that are on their doorstep. Let's wrap this up by looking at how we can measure whether levelling up has been achieved, particularly in this levelling up goal, uh, and how big companies can, can measure that themselves. Um, I'm going to come to you, Nicola and Beth, um, in a moment. But let's start with uh, Seema. How, how do you think you can best measure progress in this area? Well, this is a really important part of the work we're doing. And I think it speaks to the strength of the coalition bringing together amazing businesses like Amazon and others, um, academics and policymakers. And in the academics, we've got a wonderful um, colleague that we've worked with, Professor Kieran Trahan at um, uh, York, who is helping us on the measurement task to really get behind the goals and see what are the data sets we want to look at. And so we're working um, with them and with other businesses to get there. And that's how we will figure out, you know, have, have we done this? Because 
to move something from an amorphous sort of just an idea or a slogan to really gritty um, measurables, because if you measure it, it's it's going to if it, it's going to get done. And that's how we really have impact on people's lives. So, Justine, in terms of we, we've talked about this on other uh, webinars on how we uh, measure KPIs, key performance indicators here. Now, individual companies will have different ways of doing it. But from your point of view, how do you measure progress here? As Seam was saying, we have a piece of work underway that Amazon is the leading partner in about how we do this better. There are lots of gaps in the data that we need on leveling up. I think for positive destinations post 16, we do have some basic data on the quantity of apprenticeships, the number of needs there are, people who aren't either doing any academic qualifications or apprenticeship or any training. But I think what's missing is that broader depth of data that can really genuinely give you a sense of whether people who want to move on in their life are able to do that and whether those routes are high quality as well. And so we've got some basic data when it comes to levelling up goal three, but actually we need a lot more and we need to get that granularity around who are getting these opportunities. As we've heard, they can make a massive difference to, to certain particular people, but we don't really understand who's actually getting those apprenticeships. So whether they're having the really biggest impact on levelling up that they could. And, and we've got some data on regional apprenticeships, for example, but probably not as much as we'd really like to have. And we probably, again, don't have as good a sense as we might about the very different employers that are offering them and the, the range of apprenticeships that employers are doing. And for example, how other companies who are as big as Amazon compare to that level of ambition that, for example, we've heard about from Amazon today. So there's quite a long way to go. Um, we have some base data, but we need a lot more. Nicola, how, how do you measure progress as a company, particularly in your area? Yeah, so in my area, um, my kind of key measures are very much around, obviously, fill rate. You know, when we've got the opportunities, we want to make sure we're doing everything we possibly can to encourage people to come in and join us. It's keeping people on scheme as well, so that retention side. You know, people keeping people, you know, engaged and giving them the confidence to achieve because as we said at the beginning you know working full-time and you know going back to like the academic world it's hard right and if you know if you left education a while ago it can be even harder so that is definitely one of our kind of like measures and then when people obviously get promoted or people go and do another scheme and I think that's great you know when people actually use some entry-level schemes I mentioned before to then, you know, increase their skills and knowledge by doing another scheme. And obviously graduation, you know, that, that's a key one for me, as we mentioned earlier, how many people, you know, achieve their apprenticeship at the end. Conversion, yes, but for me, it's not necessarily about conversion, it's giving people opportunity to get the work experience, to get the qualifications, to then do what they wish, you know, and that's what people need, they need that experience, not necessarily the qualifications all the time, but they need to get that work experience. And that's what, you know, we want to give people. Now, Beth, you have the words Europe leader in your job title, which I, I'd, I'd love to be a Europe leader. Um, what, what can you learn from Amazon across Europe in the way that they engage with the community and uh, sort of d in different countries uh, and what they're doing that maybe we could do better here? Good question. Um, I think it also comes back to the, that intersection between what governments do, what corporates do, what civil society and the education system do. And, and obviously that looks different country by country because um, there's different support needs, there's different communities that come in. Um, we, we've just been discussing uh, quite recently the support that we offer through to, to refugees. Obviously the, the Afghan refugees coming into Europe have been top of mind in recent weeks. So not just the support that Amazon's offered through our disaster relief programs um, on the ground, but also the kind of reconstruction and support that we give to um, people coming into, into the region, into the markets that we live and work in. 
um, and what that looks like and holding those questions, being prepared to kind of analyze, have those difficult conversations, inviting people in as critical friends. I think one of the kind of valuable things about the leveling up goals conversation is it's created um, that environment where businesses can share, um, where MPs, previous MPs, current, etc., cetera, um, can provide that kind of critical friend to challenge us, to stretch us. Um, and from a European context, um, the impact of the last year, the impact of the pandemic in particular, um, both in terms of the economic impact on people, the sustainable livelihoods that this 16 plus group might have expected that is shifting and changing, um, the mental health and resilience um, struggles that some people are ha were having before and continue, continue to have now. Um, and as we think about that and the role that kind of corporates play in that community environment, um, the investment support that we offer through those community programs, be it cash donations, product donations, um, advisory support, um, so like the logistics that we offer for food programs in parts of Europe, for example, um, that's all quite critical support because Amazon is unique. We've we've got this reach um, and this depth within the communities through our um, through our distribution network as well that you know not every business can can mm. offer. So when we think about those unique capabilities that we have, that's where we can uniquely level up and and go beyond um, just those conversations around skills. And that that's sort of the the lens that we try and apply as we think what is a real true strategic way of, of breaking down those barriers to to kind of leveling up for the for the communities that we care about and, and seek to serve. Well Justin would you like to just sum up briefly what what the ground that we've covered over the last 45 minutes or however long it is that we've been talking and um, ju just think what have we learned and, and how can people what can people take away from this? I think what we've learned that's uh, changing about destinations post 16 plus is that the vocational route is becoming ever more important. And if we're really going to have that level of choice we want for people, then businesses play a key role in actually making that happen. I think the other thing that's fascinating and really comes across is no one's passing a law around that kind of leadership you need from a company like Amazon to have them do all of these things. It is a business imperative around getting the people that they need, but fundamentally it's a decision they are making as a company about how they want to fit into those wider communities. And what's really interesting is their innovation around how they're choosing to do that. And I hope through this work on the leveling up goals, it's not just about how we do better measurement, it's also about sharing some of those ideas and innovation and best practice with a much wider corporate Britain that can look at it and see what works for, for very different organisations too, but ones that are also going to be able to play a leading role. Well, I'd like to thank Amazon for supporting this webinar and thanks to Nicola Drury and uh, Beth Knight for joining us as well and of course Sima Kennedy and Justine. So join us again next time. All of the Leveling Up Goals seminars are on the website if you'd like to catch up on them. I think there must be what 15 or 16 there now and there are more to come. Thanks for joining us. Goodbye.